There's a shed here. Uh, there's a group singing near me. They just showed up out of nowhere. No. Oh no, they're singing. Sounds like gospel. There's like these people that come, they're like, come to the homeless people. I don't know if this guy's homeless, but like he's always here. And then there's a group of about seven or eight and they come and sing with this guy. I'll show you. Hey, Fernando. <laughs> hey, Zabu. <laughs> Popcorn's not ready. I was just testing out this live thing to see because I'm using my phone be careful with the homeless people man <laughs> yeah these ones are harmless I think they just like lie down and sleep here um, but yeah there are some crazies you're right so just testing this out to see I want to can you guys tell me what you see I'm gonna get out of this but go into amazing slowdown now to, to listen to something and I want to see if you guys notice it all right I'm gonna do it now All right, so I just got out of it and came back in. Did you guys hear anything? We'll see it. Yeah, I cut out, okay. It probably just cuts out when I do it. So what I did is I just went to Amazing Slowdown now, through my phone, listened to it for about 15 seconds and then switched back to this. So you guys saying it just cut out, eh? Hey, I really. I was listening to that Avery Wilson one. I was working on that this morning. Working on that blend. Because after I've been practicing, I'm noticing my falsetto is much nicer when it's independent. But I oh, was still cutting now. It should be all right, but now, now. Mm. By the way, if you guys want to see my view, have a, have a look. I can do this thing. It's a bloody kid. I can switch the cameras, ready? So this is what I'm looking at. This is my view. It's got the sun right up there. Nice and bright. And back to me. It's pretty cool. Did you guys see that? The camera switch? It's pretty nice. I work just in that building just there. So it's pretty cool. Just get to just that building there. It's the behind the tree. Yeah, man. It is really relaxing. And uh, big time. It's nice. I never worked in a place where I could chill like this on my break. So I'm really happy that working in this place. Can you guys hear that music in the back? <laughs> I feel like slitting my throat. I know like I'm a musician, I like music and that, but when I hear music I don't like, it really like irritates me. <laughs> Do you guys get like that? Especially plain music. I don't know, I feel like some music is really plain. Kind of like folky sometimes. Yeah, Zabu, it's a really nice place to chill. I just had like a little nap, <laughs> like literally, I put my bag as my pillow, put like a little plastic bag behind my back and I legit like have a nap and I just put on earphones and like listen, in, listen to this podcast, kind of chat, not podcast, I know why I say podcast, it's just the YouTube videos of a show where they're just kind of talking, puts me right to sleep. <laughs> what time is it over there for you guys that are in right now, Fernando? Uh, really and Zabu. I live in Sydney. Ah, uh, 9 p.m. there. Yeah, cool. Texas. Nice. 10 p.m. Zabu. Yeah, you guys are close. It's um, what's time now? It's 1:52 here in Sydney, Australia. Ohio. I'm going to do a little practice, but I'm feeling a little bit lazy. 
bit sleepy, staying up too late still. Columbus, Dallas, Texas. Oh yeah, 9, 9 p.m. I'm guessing, right? I oh, really. I think I'm getting the life sucked out of me from the music. <laughs> nah, I was already tired. Oh no. Oh, I think it is. What do you think? Oh, they sing Amazing Grace, yeah. But they sing it like they're being tortured. Oh, come on, bro, sing. Sing. You've got like seven of them and they're all singing it in that same way. Sing like you mean it. <laughs> right? Sometimes you gotta lose. Nice. Check out that blend. Welcome to that blend. Try singing opera. That'd be funny. <laughs> Amazing. How to sing opera. Oh, there we go. Gotta get that right sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Stop singing. First was Kermit. It's kind of what opera sounds like sometimes. It's comedy. Oh, you're literally on the other side of the world. Yeah, man. Shit is crazy. It trips me out. Like, it's nighttime where you guys are, and it's daytime here. It's weird, right? But I'm ahead of you, right? Because I'm just ahead. I'm superior. No, no. As in, I'm ahead, as in Sydney. As in, it's Friday here. It's Thursday there, right? For you guys. Now they got that song in my head. Amazing Grace. All right, I'm gonna go back to my song, to the, to the blend. Sometimes you gotta lose. So this is how I would train that blend. All right, this is how I usually train it. I've gotten it to where it is now, but it needs more work. So let's try it. So I literally go to the two notes where the blend happens. So the note, the blend note and the note the chest note that's before the falsetto note. So it's not a blend note, it's a falsetto note. So it's the chest to the falsetto. So I'll go. And then I go back and forth. So these are the reps. This is how I train it. So I'm trying to break, I'm trying to break through to eliminate how many times that shit happens where it happened in the first time I did it, where you saw how it cracked and it sounded weird. So I'm trying to eliminate that by doing lots of reps and uh, making that sort of not happen or happen less. So it eventually gets to the point where it doesn't break at all or minimum and I get faster at the change. <laughs> While staying right on pitch. Yeah, so slow motion. Oh, <sighs> feeling pretty tired. Thanks, Zabu. <laughs> Fernando. My voice has that opera quality, which is annoying because I want to sing Army and Pop. Opera quality. You know, the thing is, listen to Pavarotti talk. He doesn't talk like what he sings. So, you don't, you might be used to making that sound when you sing, but you can change it. I think you're, you're probably subconsciously choosing that sound because maybe you listen to it a lot or whatever. I'm not sure why. Did you listen to it a lot, Fernando? But yeah, I mean, it's a choice. Like, I chose to try to sing operatic 
you know. So I think you can choose. R&B is more like the speaking sound. It's more like the the person's normal quality. Yeah, yeah. It's like not a funny voice you're putting on that much. It's less of that. Whereas opera is like really distinct. I'm singing now. You know, it doesn't sound like anything like when someone's speaking. So um, emulate. Try to emulate what singers are doing, and you get closer to that sound, maybe. Sounds like an ambulance siren. Oh yeah, the blend. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's like true, full-on technical work. It doesn't even sound like the song anymore. But I'm working on that, that hard spot, and that's what I have to do to improve it. If I keep working on the run as a whole, I won't actually be working on the weak spot. I'll just be working on what I'm already good at, which is a different kind of training. It's more like speed and memorization, where you're working on what you're already good at. But yeah, obviously the goal is to work on what I'm weak at, which is that flip part, making that faster. Um, Zabu says to Fernando, I used to sing like that until I started singing in falsetto. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Because um, opera singers don't sing in falsetto that much. Hey, they usually sing in that really loud kind of a tone for most of the track. I'm just going to get my reps in. Guys, feel free to ask me questions if you have any. Sometimes you gotta lose. And that high note is more of a range problem. So that's a different kind of training. So I'll have to work on getting that range more comfortable because it's really high. I think it's like an F or a G or something like that. Can you guys work it out for me? What's that note? Figure that out for me. Figure that note out for me. I think it's like an F sharp or a G. Oh, wow, well, I'm really tired. I'm feeling like a bit dizzy singing. I think I've got a piss as well. That's probably why. It's G5. That's why. It's G5. Like a G6. So it's because it's really high. So that's more of a range thing. So it's not only hitting that note, but it's also hitting that note while I'm doing that rest of the phrase, which makes it harder because I'm singing more. The more you sing, as in more as in the phrase is long, and the longer the phrase, the harder it is to have high range because you have to have that breath, longer breath control. So it's, it's kind of complicated, but yeah, the longer a phrase is, the harder it is to hit the range that even if, you, even if I can hit a G5, hitting it while I'm singing a 10 second phrase makes it harder. So it's like a whole, it's a different kind of training where I have to train the long phrase. And then I'll probably drop the key and gradually go up. Or I could just keep training it in that same key until it gets stronger. Because I can already do the G5. Hey, J-Express. Zabu. I have a hard time singing high chest, lol. How do I do it like you, lol? It's G5, by the way. Um, yeah, man. Like we did in the lesson, Zabu. Uh, drop the key like six down. And then try to sing it in your, your medium to loud chest and take that up. So drop it six down where you're like comfortably in your loud chest. Like it's, it's really comfortable and you can fill up the room with that chest voice, yeah? And then take it up. So down six, take it up. You might need to go down more than six. If you're doing high stuff like the song that we worked on, you might have to take it down more, like down nine. I've had to do that sometimes. But the point is, get in your chest, comfortably in your medium to loud chest sound, and then work up. And then do like one or two reps and then move up a key. One or two reps, move up a key. See how high you can take it. That's how I did it. That's how I currently do it when I'm going higher as well. 
Rockstar Post Malone featuring 21 Savage. I don't know that song, man. Uh, but maybe comment it on another one of my videos and then I can look it up because this comment's going to disappear after this video ends. Fernando, I feel since my voice is slightly deeper, it just sounds more operatic naturally. Okay. I've heard I have to keep my atoms up on natural and my voice just sounds more heavy, big vibrato kind of thing. Well, take out the vibrato and go straight tone. Yeah? Even in your low notes. So, uh, like that. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, uh, operatic or whatever. It's not exactly. But it's, just, it's a different sound than how I usually sing, right? And then try to get it to be like the sound that you want. Uh, same note different placement yeah so play around with that play around with that man go uh, same note different placement going down going up i don't i don't think about it with the larynx i just think about it with the sound the the, the kind of sound i'm making it's like a imitation-y kind of nasally deeper if you want Kermit the Frog, that might help. kermit -y sound down lower, nasally sound up higher. So um, I think of it like that. I don't think of it in larynx because I'm not thinking about what I'm moving. Yeah. Uh, but if that helps you, thinking about the larynx, you, you can think about it that way. I just don't think of it that way. But it's not wrong to think about it that way, I don't think. It's the same thing, like I'm visualizing sounds of artists instead of visualizing movement of larynx, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I prefer ear training. Ear visual, like visualizations that have to do with your ear than physical sensation visualizations, if that makes sense. But it's up to you, try both. F sharp, Fernando. Okay, F sharp, one says F sharp, one says G. <laughs> Probably because I sound shit up there, it's hard to tell what I'm doing. No, the problem is in breath control, it's placement, lol. I can hit C5, I can hit C6, like C3. Your, I didn't say your problem was breath control. Are you saying, I'm not sure who you're answering. Um, are you answering Fernando, Zabu? Yeah, a bit more nasal, but not fully nasal. Yeah, it's, it's hard. You really do have to find a, the area in between. Yeah? So, that's why I like to demonstrate the two extremes. Because they help you find that area. So, uh, 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 and then go in between. Uh, Hard to do, but try that as an exercise. Just try that over and over and over. See how you go. It's, it's, it's tricky though. It's tricky to do it without changing pitch. <laughs> yeah, because that's a just placement. Ricky. Oh, it looks like we got some messed up shit here. <laughs> just reading that comment. You yeah, asked so like a Jeopardy question. Oh my god. That's fucked up, man. What's with these weird ass people commenting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, I'm sorry, I was just reading Zabu's comment about nasality. Um, that's good, that's, that's good advice, man. Um, so, practice the thing that I just did, because then that'll give you some 
that'll let you focus on play placement because it's two different skills. Placement is one skill and volume is a different skill. So they both have to be trained differently. So placement is trained the way I just demonstrated and volume would be trained like this. Uh, vol see, volume exists. You have to do volume on one placement. Yeah? So that's, that's the thing. When you're doing volume, you're usually doing it on one placement. You can't train volume on multiple placements because then you're not training volume anymore. You're training a mix of placements and volume, which you don't really want to do because placement, you want to change volume on one placement. So for example, volume. Uh, uh, it's volume. I didn't change placement at all. Yeah. So you want to be able to control your volume on one placement and then you want to be able to control your placement. So tr try your placement first, pick a placement you like and then control the volume on that placement. Good luck. Yeah, placement is very difficult for some people as well as volume. Some people can't control their volume like that, what I just did. It takes a lot of work. Thanks, Jay Express. Fernando, can you do Tori Kelly riffs? Tori Kelly is super fast, stay. Hey, um, uh, I never practiced Tori Kelly because I don't really listen to her songs, but I do love her voice. I do love her voice. But I haven't really, just, I just haven't really listened to her music that much, only bits and pieces. But yeah, she's super fast. I can't quite go that fast. But she's, yeah, she's as fast as the goal that I'm trying to get to, like the people that I like, Wanye and Tank, etc. But if you like Tori, definitely go, man. Go for a Break down his shit. Zabu, you no, know, you said your G5 was breath problems, and I was like, it's most likely... Oh, me? Okay. No, no, I didn't mean... I meant breath as in... It's, it's like, because the phrase is so long, that when you do a longer phrase, you have to train for that by itself. In a, you have to train the length of the phrase with a high range. Whereas when you're training, whereas when I just train G5 on its own, it's like, that's, it's easier than doing G5 within a 10 second long run or within like a five second sung lyric phrase. That's what I meant. I'm not sure if you know what, I'm, you probably know what I meant. Let me just read the rest of your message before I go on. And I was like, it's most probably a placement because when you're G5, A5, I start transitioning to whistle flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as well. It's like... I'm going into that new part of my range. I don't call it like transitioning to whistle or fledgling, but I get what you mean. Like I just call it range, as in I'm just going higher. And when you're getting into a harder part of your range, you're totally right. It's like it's a new area and it's hard to train. But yeah, the, the concept, the way you, the, the fix is the same. Yeah. The fix is train the note by itself and train the note within the context of the phrase that you're actually trying to do. Yeah, you're right, Zabu. I think we're just saying the same thing in different ways. Zabu, sorry for bad grammar. All oh, good, man. Fernando, I'm going to do Tori Kelly riffs two octaves lower. <laughs> yeah, man, of course. Got to do it lower. Waski, hey, Waski. Can you show me what you're supposed to do with your voice when doing a run? You don't... You don't do anything different to normal singing. All you do is break the run down one note at a time and keep, it, keep the notes connected because they usually happen like they're all connected together. They don't stop, like there's no pause in between notes. So for example, like lyrics, there's pause between lyrics, but runs, there isn't usually a pause. So for example, yeah, yeah. I'll just do three notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all you do. So try that, Waski. Yeah, that's all you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not doing anything different. The speed comes from doing it slowly thousands of times. Once you've done it thousands of times over many practice sessions, you develop speed. That's it. You do have to consciously try to go faster as well like over those thousand reps that you do. Alvin, how long does it take to develop pitch and range? P 
pitch accuracy and higher range, they take years. So uh, you develop them alongside each other. You don't do one or the other. So developing them, you have a way you practice and then you'll just repeat that practice for several months to years. And then one, two, three years later, you'll sound very, very different if you're training in a way that makes you better. That's it. Yeah, it takes months to years. It's very gradual, man. It's very, very gradual. I mean, compare it to like learning to write. If you watch school kids when they're when they're five and they start learning to write, they can't write at all when they're starting. They're, it's like scribble. They can't even scribble. Scribble. Their scribbles look bad, right? They can't even hold the pen. So you got to think of it like that. And then gradually, they very gradually, in tiny steps, their writing gets clearer and it gets more easier to read and they start feeling more confident about the writing it's like that it's exactly like that it's very gradual it's not like start and end point well you can look at it at it as start as in you're very bad you can just scribble end point you can write it's legible anyone can read it and you can write at a pretty fast rate that's a start and end point right what's happening in here is hundreds of hours of practice that's what's happening same with the voice. Start point, can't sing on pitch that well. Pitch accuracy is like 25%. Range is like one octave, right? End point, range is three octaves. Pitch accuracy is 90%. Professional singer. In here, what's in here? Hundreds of hours of practice. That's all. No different to reading and writing. There's nothing special about it other than you need a strategy. And in school, they develop the strategy for reading and writing. They use sheets where you like you trace the words, you know, you trace an A, you trace a B, you do it really big, you gradually get into smaller letters. It's all strategies. They make you do it over and over, repetitions, and gradually instead of tracing, they give you like broken lines that you trace over, and then they make you do it by yourself. They give you lines to these are all strategies. That's what lessons are for, to give you strategies to get to that end point. So one strategy is like courses you buy where they just have scales going up and down and they have their strengths and they have their limitations you know my course has its strengths and limitations that it gives you you know and um, lessons have strength limitation every teacher has their way they teach has their focus they give you to help you get better every, every teacher has different strategies right and that's where people get lost people buy a course they don't get better they get a teacher they don't get better or they get better at some things and they're like oh but i haven't met my goal yet probably because the teacher doesn't have the right strategies that you got to spend that hundreds of hours on because teachers fight about strategies all the time whereas when it comes to reading and writing maybe teachers don't fight as much because it's like it works everyone is doing it everyone actually learns so it so there isn't much to fight about because everyone is learning they figured it out. Maybe in the beginning, earlier times, they did fight a lot about it. Who knows? They probably fought a lot about what strategy is the right way. You know what I mean? How much is too much? Which strategies are useless? Which strategies are really effective? That kind of thing. And that's where singing is right now. People are really fighting because there's like all classical methods and there's technology-based, song-based methods like what I do now. There's people that are kind of natural, that just use songs. There's people that are in between that are mixing both methods. And so there's a lot of confusion about what's the right method and everyone thinks they got the right method obviously i think my method is optimal and really really good and every teacher will tell you about it, tell you that about their own method and the only way you can find out more is by actually trying with each teacher and trying their ways out maybe interviewing them seeing what they like seeing how they respond when you ask certain questions seeing what kind of exercises they give you that kind of stuff and measuring your own progress all right that was a really long answer but i hope you got I hope you like that that was good I liked what I said there. Fernando, how can I work on vibrato or is it something that comes naturally? It doesn't come naturally. For some people, it comes naturally because they hear it and they just have a good ear and they can copy it by themselves without help. But if you're like me and you didn't have a good ear in the beginning, you needed help. So I needed help. Go to my website, rmbsinglessons.com. There's a free vibrato course there. It's actually free. I give you like 10 weeks or nine weeks or something. Practice each one. For like a week and just practice with those videos okay look on my website you'll find it it's somewhere there it's like it just looks like a youtube youtube playlist embedded inside one of my websites 
it says free course or something like that if you search on my website have a look there it's there practice it every day the videos are one and a half minutes each just do them for one and a half minutes just sing along with them and watch my fingers because they give you the guide of when to change when to like change notes uh, 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 uh. they give you the guide of when to do it bro just like shred guitar man you gotta practice this shit like a motherfucker practice it every day it'll get better gradually gradually feels weird at first but it gets better it's like anything feels weird you know when you learn a chord it's weird as hell when you learn a, a new chord but then it gets comfortable and then it becomes like oh second nature natural right <laughs> we know you weren't born shredding right you weren't born shredding guitar so it's something you learn how to do you can definitely learn it bro you can have a smooth ass vibrato you can do it bro you can do it i put in dozens of hours on vibrato nah Thank you, man. I love that video. It inspired me with that. Waski, okay, can you say it again? My dad told me to go take out the trash. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's it. Ooh. Do that. Do that every day, 10 times. Watch what happens. Ooh. Or lower. Do that 10 times every day with the aim. Uh, don't, try, don't even try to go fast. And then after you've done it 10 times every day for about a week or for a couple days, just try to go fast for fun and watch what happens. Go a little bit faster. You will gradually get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit faster naturally because this, doing it slow makes it become easy. And then you do it faster and you naturally get... You, once you've done it slow, it becomes easier. Then you gradually naturally be able to go quicker. So slow practice is the key. You don't do anything special. You don't feel anything special other than keeping the notes connected together. Ooh. Not doing anything special. So I can do it at all different speeds. Ooh. Because I've worked at many different speeds, developed many speeds. Try that. Zalbu, I think the bad thing about singing community is we generalize. Yeah, part of it. Yeah, my singing problem is probably not the same as, let's say, Fernando or you, Rochette. I think we should individualize and take lessons with you. Definitely, yeah. Every problem is individual. And I mean, unless you're learning from a mentor, like, you, I mean, you don't have to take lessons, but if you can figure it out through my videos and through my courses and stuff, great. But if you can't figure it out, I mean, of course, you need a mentor, man. Like, everyone needs a mentor. I had mentors. I had Karim, my brother and my sister, tell me when my vibrato was bad or my runs were good or, or as I was off. Like, they helped me. Um, and then I also had lots of books and I did learn a lot. I learned enough so that I could kind of figure shit out by myself. But I mean, that was a super long journey and some people can do that, some need help, you know what I mean? So you do, you do need a mentor, whether it's a book or a course or videos or real lessons. Getting a mentor and working on the specific problem is always the best way to work on things. Generalizations have their place because I mean, I wouldn't, my videos would never be helpful if I didn't generalize, you know what I mean? Because I'm not... I'm do, I do give answers to general kind of issues like range, falsetto, pitch accuracy. Like they are general issues, but then people have specific problems that maybe they don't understand that that's their problem that they need further help with. Like you understand you're working on your chest range, Zalbu, but maybe you don't get exactly whereabouts or the point where you need to take the exercise I gave and maybe modify the exercise slightly to meet you where you're currently at. So yeah, definitely, man, you've got to individualize. Fernando, the reason why I think I can learn to sing is because you said it takes hundreds of hours to sing it. I spent thousands of hours on practicing guitar, so I think I can do it. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely, but I like how I say haha when I'm reading it <laughs> to show that it's not my real life. Imagine I'm reading your comment and I'm like, 
<laughs> I can't even do it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real fake laugh. <laughs> Does it make you want to laugh? <laughs> I'm fake, fake laughs here, but I'm trying to make you laugh. Totally, man. It does. It takes, it takes hundreds of hours, but the strategy is important. And I'm sure you had a great strategy that led you to being able to play like that. I'm sure you got your ideas about strategy for practicing guitar, right? Yeah, same with singing. If you don't use a good strategy, you're not gonna get better. You could spend hundreds of hours, but you won't get better unless you're using a good strategy. You could sing the same song hundreds of times, which would take dozens of hours, but it won't get better or much better. It might get five, ten percent better, twenty percent better even. But you want it to get way better, like hundred percent better, or whatever. You're gonna need, you're gonna need a, the right strategy. Of course, you know, it's a strategy, perfect practice, you could call it, or practicing with an effective strategy. Different ways to say it, but you get what I mean. J Express, I'm doing the vibrato right now, though. Good. I put it there for free for you guys. Trust me, I I'm trying to come up with ways to help you learn simply. Like, so I made video. All you do is click it and practice with it every day. So you got no excuse, cunts. <laughs> being aggressive but sometimes like you know put a bit aggressive so like it ugh, clicks in your mind to remember you know make it as i try to, to make it as simple as possible as effective as possible there's no talking in those videos it's very practical you just play it and do it i guarantee guarantee it will work just play it and do it some people need a bit of help a bit of adjustment because they don't know how to copy it maybe they might need a bit of help but once you get a bit of help then you'll be on your way some people don't need any help Vibrato, ooh, I love that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Zabi, what, big, what book did you learn from? I started with the singing, the complete idiot's guide for singing. I started with that. And then I used the guitar book, a complete idiot's guide to learning guitar. And I adapted the principles for learning guitar songs to singing. And then, as you know, I use Amazing Slow Down. So I mixed the, the ideas from the books. But the Complete Idiot's Guide for Singing, that taught me how to, how to um, pronounce vowels properly. Because I wasn't pronouncing vowels properly when I was singing. So that really helped, that book, for that specific skill. Zalbu, plus how do you shorten that journey, by the way, and get good really fast? The best way to get good as quick as possible is to have an effective strategy. So the strategies I feel that I teach are extremely effective and the fastest that I know of because you have the song which is the goal and then you're working towards the goal with every rep that you do modifying with speed and key and that's it I think that's the most effective strategy slow practice slow practice of difficult spots it builds strength and it builds the good ear and of course regular assessment by a mentor because if you're regularly getting told, fix this, fix that, oh, that's good, let's do this now. A mentor guides you in that way, which gets you there as fast as is possible. That's what I would think. Because I used to go back to the books, I used to go back to videos, go back to the artists, go back to Wanye, go back to Slow Downer, go back to my brother, go back to my friends at karaoke, and say, how am I doing? Now, I, I can't ask a book, how am I doing? And it won't answer, but I can look in the book again to refresh my memory on things that I'm supposed to be doing and like oh yes I haven't been doing that oh he said go super slow I haven't really been going super slow and then I'll think of it oh go super slow oh he, mean, he might mean go super slow on this what if I try it on this part of the song you know what I mean because a book can't tell you exactly what you need to do but sometimes you reread and then you you're like oh I can apply it here you know what I mean so going back to the mentors back to the videos back to the regularly and then that that triggers your mind that's why I do regular videos because saying things in a slightly different way can make the message sink through you know yep Aussies love the word can't <laughs> see here some people can't deal with that word they're like whoa that's too rude you know but some people are like they don't care you know I'm one of those people I don't care about swearing it's actually fun <laughs> is that your strategy is really effective thank you man but sometimes I feel like I'm not making progress but it works for you well yeah 
if you feel like you're not making progress, I'm sure there's something that we could do together. I am sure. I have a lot of students that say that to me. <clears throat> and usually they're actually wrong. They're usually making progress and they don't see their progress as much as I see their progress because they can't see the stages the same way I can. So I highly recommend you record your practice, Zalbu. Record your practice and then you can actually see your progress much differently when you record it. You see how I record my practices? When I watch my practices, I'm like, wow, I really noticed my progress much more than when I wasn't watching myself practice. I don't watch all of them. But lately I have been watching them and I'm like, wow, it's quite like encouraging and very interesting when I hear the progress. Not just between now and three months ago or a year ago, but even within that own practice, within that one practice, I hear that progress and I'm like, wow, or across a few practices. Record yourself practicing Zabu. Record yourself, bro. Okay? Record. I highly recommend. Whether you're doing lessons with me or not, and that's great. You can book a lesson. Great, man. And it's fun. You know it's fun when we do lessons together. But record yourself. I really think that will shed a lot of light for you. Then you can be sure when you're recording yourself, you know. This doesn't just work for me. This, this does work for every student I've ever had. I haven't had one student that doesn't make progress. I haven't had one student that doesn't make progress. So I'm sure you can do it, bro. But you know, I've got to say, a lot of my smart students make this comment, like they feel like they're not making progress and I'll, say to, and I'll show them something and I'll be like, see, look, look what you're doing there. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm making progress. Because making 10% progress is not that, it's not that obvious, it's not that visible, unless you're recording your practice. Then it becomes more obvious. That's why I recommend you record your practice. I'm more com Fernando, I'm more comfortable singing in front of people than playing guitar. Because I know I'm shit singing. So whatever. So whatever. But guitar is something I've done all my life. So if I scrub, I'd be really hard on myself. Ah, interesting. Yeah, man. It's interesting, eh? At the end of the day, you got to recognize that that kind of fear is just something that we all deal with. And it's something to be conquered. It's something to be, to be recognized as this is just something that you go through when, when you perform. And it's just normal. And the more you do it, the less conscious you get. The more you worry, oh, you know, I put a video up and it's not quite perfect. Oh, like they saw me perform like this and it wasn't quite perfect. I'm not as good as I want to be. I'm not. The more you do that, bro, the less you are achieving your goal, which is to be comfortable performing to be comfortable um, self-assessing and practicing and that kind of stuff, you know. Being comfortable with your long-term goals, comfortable that, you know, you're practicing towards them and that mistakes are just part of the performance journey, okay. You just got to accept it. Just accept it and put yourself out there more and more and more. And the more you do, the less you have this fear because it really is a waste of energy. This excessive fear, I've seen how I've seen how this fear tears people apart and stops amazing performers from performing. I have incredible friends that, that are afraid to perform. They need to get drunk to perform. They worry about what everyone's thinking. They worry about their song choice to the point where it paralyzes them and makes them not have fun. And I'm like, man, like fear is okay, but don't let it stop your fun. That's the point. We're having fun out here and we're entertaining each other. And it's not entertaining when someone is scared little shit. It's, so, it's like, it's not entertaining when you're scared. It's not. It's like, it gets irritating if you keep saying, I'm scared, I'm scared. Think about when someone does that in front of you. Like, you feel like agitated, like, come on, perform already. You know what I mean? Just perform, have fun. I want to see you have fun. I don't want to see you be scared. That's not enjoyable. That's stressful. I want to see you have fun. Have fun with it, bro. Just have fun with it, you know? Think about it that way. It, where would all your entertainers be if they were worrying about, worrying about how they looked? I'm sure they're self-conscious when they're performing. All the best entertainers, that people that entertain you. But they put it out there. I'm sure they're self-conscious about albums they made or whatever. Just, just get on with it sort of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I never swear, J Express. <laughs> Sorry, man, I'm rude. Comparatively, uh, yeah, don't get frustrated, Zabu. 
Don't get frustrated. Just record yourself, man. Start with that. Fernando, can you do the Halo Riff by Beyonce? Hit me like a ray of sun Choose my darkest night No, no, no I'm not sure exactly what it is Do my darkest night 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 Darkest night Darkest night Darkest night Hit me like a ray of sun Na 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 darkest night Not bad, alright Scott Hoying, I don't know Scott Hoying bro, I'll have to look him up Send me some videos Confidence beats fear Yeah, and um Just doing it, taking that action Gradual action of performing, 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 performing Gradually builds confidence Fernando, I performed for the first time yesterday at an open mic. Oh, congratulations. Great, man. Let's see. You're on your way, bro. Greg, hey, Ra hey Rachel. <laughs> Rashad. Hey, what's up, Greg? I was about to go, but now you're here. Shit, bro. I saw your, you looked up your video yesterday because I'm curious. Oh, no, no. I didn't look it up. I, I saw another transformation by Lexicon and your video popped up down the bottom. 1.7 million. God damn, bro. Going crazy. 1.7 <laughs> It's a lot of views man Is that video monetized Greg? Or did they Did they like um, Not allow it because it's got songs in it The belt are king Oh no hey Greg's belt man Greg's belt But Greg's overall voice man Greg's runs Oh hey <laughs> It was monetized like halfway through. Ah, well that's good, you got something. Did it, did it stop being monetized? Yeah, yeah, tell me about it, bro. Yeah, man, all of my teaching videos, like when I started, I did guitar teaching. None of them, like now they got monetized like two years ago or something, when YouTube changed the rules about monetization. Oh, your channel wasn't monetized. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. You only get to monetize when you get a certain amount of views. Hey, 10,000 or something like that. Like on your whole channel, I think. I just remembered, yeah. But yeah, but anyway. Anyway. Are you teaching people, Greg? Are you getting students from that? Or do you teach? Because I know you teach some of the some of our singing friends and stuff. Tristan and Fahim and, and Zabu and stuff, right? Yeah, man. Oh, I remember that. I think it was Tennessee, Tennessee whiskey. Your cover, Greg. Damn, damn. I commented on it. The runs and stuff that I liked. So cray. So cray. So good, bro. Such a good singer, man. Uh, a lot of requests to teach and make videos, but I've been super busy. Yeah. What do you do, Greg? What are you busy with? That's great, man, that you're getting that. Too. It's just cool. Cool to get. Cool to get a bit of recognition and stuff. It's nice. He doesn't teach me, but we're friends. Ah, okay, cool. And I doubt. Your belting is crazy. Yeah, he is, man. I do have to go, though. Sorry, Greg. Sorry, Greg. I'd love to chat with you sometime, man, though. Let's do a chat one day. Oh, yeah, work. Batista. Oh, yeah, cool. My brother's a Batista. Karim's a Batista? No, he works at a bar. Ah, oh, you don't sing that much. Yeah, true. Greg versus Rashad Rufoff. <laughs> that would be mad fun. That would be mad fun, bro. Like Pitch Perfect style? That'd be interesting. I wonder if that can be done actually live. Like Pitch Perfect is a pretty cool idea. Oh, whatever, bro. You won't get slayed. You won't get slayed. Not like a riff off as in runs, but as in a riff off like as in how they do it on Pitch Perfect where they sing a song and then they take the word and then they sing. There's a bit of a delay on the video call, but that could be fun, man. 
All right, guys, I have to catch you next time. Really fun talking to you. Fernando, Zelbu, I uh, really was in there for a little bit. Greg, who else is here? J Express. Thank you guys. It's really fun, Wesky. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Waiting for the riff off there. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man. Let's hook it up, Greg. Um, yeah, Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts is great. Can you add me, Greg, please? Um, see you, J Express. So it's um, rashedh at hotmail.com. R A C H E D H at hotmail.com. And I think you'll find me on Hangouts with that. So just add me. Oh, I got your email. You sent me an email a while ago. Whoever does it first. Yeah, I add you on Hangouts and we'll have a chat or whatever whenever, whenever you get a minute. All right, later, bro. See you guys. Fernando, that lesson, man. You got to perform for me and then we'll do that lesson. All right? See you.